Okay, good afternoon. Greetings and good afternoon to all. Good evening if you're in the Pacific Coast. We truly appreciate your time and interest to participate of this webinar today titled Listen, Understand, and Connect Strategies for Creating Meaningful Connections with Students. Today, our speaker is Dr. Rosaline Martinez Viscovich, who is currently a head student and academic service consultant. She works with us as a consultant and she also works with other clients. So thank you, Rosaline, for your valuable collaboration with this initiative to help us support the faculty, administrators, and students as part of HEADS missions to promote the integration of technology into higher education. Today, we have more than 200 participants registered. So far, we are a, more than 100 connected. And uh, so we hope these 200 participants who registered, sorry, uh, registered from more than 20 higher education institutions in Puerto Rico, and also we have some from the Department of Education here on the island. Also, we have participants from more than eight member institutions in the U.S. and some others from organizations like Aspira Puerto Rico. Greetings to all. We hope that this webinar will be of great benefit to everyone. As usual, and if you have been in other HEADS webinars, before we start the webinar, we all uh, usually share some uh, announcements. Um, the first one as for sometimes the this feature doesn't work if you are able to uh, unmute yourself please don't do don't do uh, that so we can avoid to, to avoid any interruption for your convenience closed captions are available in english for this webinar to active this feature click the cc you will see the cc live transcript bo button on your a uh, computer or on your mobile uh, you may uh, you can use that to have the closed captions. Uh, is English is not your first language, and probably it's better for you use the language to understand better. Again, another. Uh, I emphasize again to avoid interruptions. Keep your microphone on mute always. Also, as usual, all our webinars uh, granted a certificate of participation. Remember to fill out the form for the participate in the chat. Uh, Isaris, our executive assistant who's here with us, is going to share the link to request the certificate. Also, you can use this QR code to request the certificate of participation as well. Uh, in the meantime, you are using your a cellular to use the QR code. Uh, please remember that after, after we finish the webinar, you will receive an email with a link to complete a short electronic survey to help us evaluate this webinar and help us identify which head services and initiatives can support your students and your feedback to help us to promote these, these services and initiatives. The surveys is anonymous and the estimated time to complete it is around five minutes. So please, we would love to hear your feedback and we appreciate your time to complete this survey. Finally, we invite you to spread the word and invite others to register and participate in our webinars and events. Our next events includes in Spanish, El Poder del Equilibrio, Estrategias para el Manejo de Estrés en la Educación a Distancia. This will be on Friday, eh, April 26th, so tomorrow. But this time, it's going to be during the morning at 10, from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. E PM excuse me, a.m. Eastern Time. And as, as well, it's, it's going to be through soon. And we have another one on May 10th. That's going to be from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Eastern Time as well. And this one's going to be with Dr. Gabriel Paisi. And he will be talking about a communication effect 
uh, uh, strategies of effective communication in the digital era. And this will be in Spanish as well. And we are announcing an special event that will be uh, this event will be on June 28. With this, we're going to close our webinars for this academic year, and we are already putting, uh, coordinating the next one for the next semester. But with this one, we invite you to uh, register. It's already open the registration. And the topic is going to be sustainability at the heart of university strategy, strategy, shared governance, and multi-stakeholder partnerships. It's going to be from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Central Time, since we're going to be in Colombia at that time. And the Puerto Rico time is from 11 30 to 1 p.m. So we invite you to benefit with the, this, the speaker of this special event is going to be Dr. Estes, Estes. The Baliz Saez de Camara, uh, and we invite you to join us. And also, it's very important that the ones who are connecting from the U.S. Uh, member institutions in different states in the United States, and also if someone from Latin America as well, remember that we already announced the Student Passport Connect, Learn, and Lead Puerto Rico edition. This is an opportunity for students from the U.S. member institutions and Latin America to come to Puerto Rico is going to be from September 2nd to the 6th. And in this, those are the spring screens of the web, web, web page that we prepare to give you all the details to benefit from this uh, uh, initiative. That is a new one that uh, with this initiative, we will light U.S. Uh, students and Latin American students to come to Puerto Rico and explore and learn uh, and develop their uh, leadership skills through academic experience. Also, students, they will have the opportunity to have students uh, to share their expertise in innovative projects, and they will be uh, sharing their projects through student presentations. Also, we're going to have, as part of this week of activities, some cultural activities as well, and the scale and everything is on the web page already. Any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Again, we're going to be visiting different institutions around the island, as you may see in this map. And also these students who come from Puerto Rico going to participate also from the Student Leadership Showcase and also the Zoom Student Experience Summit. And you have all the information there at the website. Finally, as you may see, always we invite you to help us promote the unlimited access to the Peterson uh, test prep to find scholarships on the, for undergraduates and graduate studies, practice tests, and ebooks to prepare for tests such as PCAT, ELSA, GRE, NCAT, and others, among a lot of other resources that these databases have. And remember that to access this, you have to go to the Student Placita. Uh, look for the Peterson test spread link and then identify the name of your institution. When you click, it's going to ask you for a password. Just put the password and you have access, unlimited access, free of charge to this database. If you don't know the password of your institution, send us an email to info at heads.org with the name of your institutions and you will be having, uh, we will be replying with the email. As well, we also offer as part of the heads benefits and services unlimited access to the Peterson Career Prep to search for jobs and internships, create, create your resume and find career advice among a lot of other resources. The same, if you go to the Student Placita to access this database, click on the Peterson Career Prep link in this case, and the password is the same one. If you don't know the password, again, send us an email and we will be happy to share it with you. Finally, we are ready to start our webinar, but first I would like to read a brief summary of Dr. Rosalind martinez Biscovich a background. Dr. Martinez is currently, as I mentioned before, heads consultant in both for students and academic components, and she helps us in different aspects here in the office. We are very happy to have her a, a, as part of our consultants. She is a Puerto Rican born in New York City, 
currently based in Caguas, Puerto Rico, with more than 20 years of experience in the administration of post-secondary institutions. Rosalind, as we call it here in the office, has held leadership roles in several institutions of higher education in Puerto Rico in crucial areas such as academic affairs, student affairs, and institutional effectiveness. During her career, she has demonstrated outstanding skills in recruiting, leading, and managing professional teams dedicated to education. And this includes the development and training of human resources and execution of major educational projects, such as the establishment of new educational institutions in Puerto Rico. Rosalind has been recognized for the commitment as an evaluator for prestigious accrediting agencies such as Middle States Commission on Higher Education and the Accrediting Council for Independent Colleges and Schools, contributing her experience in reaffirming high levels of education quality and excellence. Her academic background includes a doctor degree in education from Nova Southeastern University, a master's degree in school administration from Cambridge College, and a bachelor's degree in business administration with a connection in management from the University of Puerto Rico. So now I'm going to stop sharing my presentation. We already have a Rosaline here with us. And in the meantime, Rosaline is uploading her presentation. That could you please, uh, Isari, help her since she's here in our office. I'm going to also want to say hi to Stephanie Perez, part of our heads team, who is uh, remotely connected and helping us with the technical of the Zoom uh, features. And also Isari that is here with us in the office. Uh, where Rosaline uh, came to offer the webinar. Uh, we already have it here, the presentation. So Rosaline, go ahead. You are mute. Remember to unmute yourself. And remember at the end of the Rosaline presentation, we will have a, a Q&A session. So please uh, make sure you use the chat for that. Go ahead, Rosaline. Okay, we are making sure that you see the presentation. Okay. Ahora. No, we can hear you, Rosalind. Can you listen to me? Oh, okay, yes. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on listening, understanding, and connect strategies for meaningful connections with students. We really appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. As Jubelki Montalvo said, I'm Rosalind Martinez and I will be the presenter at today's session. I would like to thank HEADS for all the initiatives aimed to promoting the success of Hispanic Latino students in different educational institutions that we serve. And uh, the, invitation, the invitation also to contribute to this forum. I'm passionate about helping educators and students build strong relationships and create positive learning environments. During today's webinar, we will be uh, exploring practical strategies and insights on how to effectively listen to students and uh, understand their needs. Whether you are an educator, an administrator, or anyone involved in supporting students, we believe today's discussion will be valuable tools and ideas for you. Throughout the session, we encourage you to ask questions and share your thoughts in the chat. We'll have dedicated QA time at the end to address your questions and engage in conversation. No sé, no lo veo aquí. The agenda for today. 
Welcome and introduction, we already did, the importance of meaningful connections with students in education, the importance in listening, understanding student needs, connecting with students, recognize and address emotional, social, and academic needs, the benefits of building strong relationship with students, and uh, we will have the final tips and takeaways and the time to ask some questions. No. Why is it important to have meaningful connections with students? That's the question. It's so important in times when institutions face so many challenges to connect with our students. Some of the challenges that we could mention are demographic changes, generational patterns, financial challenges, and increasing competition between universities and colleges. Meaningful connections with students are crucial because they foster a positive and supportive learning environment that promotes engagement and academic success. When students feel understood and valued by their faculty and the administrators, they are more likely to be motivated and invest in their learning. Student services play an important role in supporting students' academic and personal success through their educational journey. These services offer resources to help students navigate challenges and maximize their potential. Academic advising, tutoring, career advising, counseling support, financial and assistance, all of those are inclusive, are important supporting and empowering the students. The importance of listening. Active listening plays a crucial role in understanding students' perspectives and experiences. When educators and administrators actively listen to their students, they create a supportive and trusting environment that foster open communication. Listening contributes to understanding students' perspectives and experiences. The role of active listening in understanding student perspectives and experiences builds trust and rapport, the students feel heard, they are more likely to trust their educators and share their thoughts and feelings openly. Trust and rapport enables deeper connections between students and educators, creating a positive classroom environment, gains insight into students' needs and concerns. By listening actively, educators and administrators can gain gain a better understanding of the student's individual needs, <clears throat> challenges, and aspirations. The insights help educators tailor, tailor the, the teaching approaches and provides targeted support to students, validate students' feelings and experiences. Active listening involves acknowledging and validating students' emotion and experiences. When a student feels validated, they are more likely to engage and to participate in discussion. Encourage open communications. Why open communications? Because active listening sets the tone to open an honest communication, a more humanized communication with the students in the classroom. Students feel comfortable sharing their perspective, which leads to a more inclusive and diverse learning environment. Tailoring feedback and support. When educators listen closely to students' concern and challenges, they can offer more personalized feedback and support. For example, if a student is struggling with a particular assignment, the educator can offer targeted guidance or additional resources to help improve. They can refer to the different services that they have at their in institution. Enhances problem solving and conflict resolution. 
Active listening helps educators understand the root causes of conflicts or issues that students face. By listening carefully, educators can work with students to find effective solution and resolve conflicts. Improves con uh, classroom management when students feel listened to and understood, they are more likely to follow uh, classroom rules and to follow the expectations. This can lead to a more positive and manageable classroom environment. Support students' engagement and learning. Active listening allows educators to connect with students' interests and mot motivation, which can increase student engagement. By understanding students' perspective, educators create more relevant and meaningful experiences. Building a state, a space for expression. When we actively listen, we help create a safe, a welcoming environment where students feel comfortable expressing themselves without fear of being judged. For example, students may share, may share personal challenges they face outside of school, outside of the university, allowing the educators to provide that emotional support and referrals to counseling and other services. Addressing misunderstandings and misconceptions. By listening carefully, educators can quickly identify and correct any misunderstanding or misconceptions students may have about a topic. For instance, if a student voice, voices a common misconception during a lesson, the educator can address promptly to ensure all students have accurate information. Teaching for effective listen, listening and understanding. Effect, effective listening is a critical skill for educators to understand their students' perspective and experiences. Some techniques for effective listening that you can use to improve your communication and connection with your students. If you are, uh, if you're talking to them and you have the chance to have them in person, you can maintain the eye contact. Keeping eye contact with the students while they're speaking demonstrate that you're attentive, that you're engaged in that conversation. This also applies for the services that we promote. Sometimes students go to an office and we're very busy. We're typing. We are just uh, talking to another uh, co-worker and, and we don't, sometimes we don't look at the student. We need that to make that eye contact. That's very important. Use known verbal cues. Show that you are listening through out nodding facial expressions and gestures. Avoid crossing your arms or opening closed off. Be patient. Our students sometimes come, they have, they allow students to express themselves. They wanna share so many things without rushing them or finishing their sentences. Give them time to gather their thoughts and speak at their own pace. Avoid interrupting, refrain from interrupting or speaking over the student while He's sharing her, uh, their thoughts or experiences. Let them finish speaking before responding. Let's listen. Keep distractions at bay. Eliminate distractions such as phones, computers, or other tasks while listening to students. Create opportunities for student input. Integrate interactive elements. You can use pause quizzes open in the questions during live sessions to encourage participation. Use QA feature to allow students to ask questions and provide input in class. Stay neutral and open-minded. That's very important. Approach conversations with an open mind and without preconceived notions. Avoid passing judgment on the student on their experiences. Show interest, real interest and curiosity of what he's trying to explain. Create a safe space for sharing. 
establish a uh, trusting environment where students feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and feelings, ensure confidentiality and respect for the students' privacy, respect the privacy, use breakout rooms for small groups discussion, which can provide more opportunities for students to share their perspectives and their experiences. Rotate between breakout rooms to listen to the different groups and engage with the students individually. Ask open-ended questions. Use open-ended questions to encourage students to share more about their experiences or opinions. Questions like, can you tell me more about that? Or how did that make you feel? can uh, lead to a deeper conversations. We need to have deeper conversations with our students in order to understand and engage. Mm -hmm. Techniques for effective listening and understanding if you're online. Establish clear communication channels. Set up dedicated channels for communication, such as chat, email, or discussion forums, so students know where to reach you, where to ask questions, and bring up their concerns. It is very important that we establish what will be the communication channels for the students. Schedule virtual office hours. Office, uh, offer virtual office hours to provide students with the opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one meeting or small group conversations. Use these sessions to listen again to students, concern and provide personalized support. Use video and audio always. Encourage students to turn also their camera and use their microphones during life safe less sessions if possible. I've been in classes where sometimes uh, I don't see a faculty member because it's not using the camera or the students are not uh, using the camera. And it is so difficult to communicate because that's like a barrier. So we, sh we should encourage students to really turn on their cameras and use their microphones during live uh, sessions if it's possible. Seeing and hearing students can enhance communication and allow you to better understand their emotions and reaction, that nonverbal communication. Use accessible materials, provide captions or transcripts for video lecturers as used as accessible formats for co uh, course or class material. Monitor nonverbal cues, pay attention to students' facial expressions and body language. During video calls to God their understanding and emotional state. Look for signs of confusion, disagreement, or distress and address them promptly. Offer breakout sessions. Like I said before, use breakout rooms for small group discussions, which can provide more uh, opportunities for students to share their perspectives and experiences. Rotate and be more personal with students. This is about humanizing, going back to basics where we were uh, more human and not that much of artificial intelligence. So this is good, but also the human in teaching, the human factors right, are very, very important. Create opportunities for um, student input. That's very important. Integrate um, elements such as all quizzes, open-ended questions, that will help a lot. Ask for written feedback, use online calls. You can use, um, you can have a chat where you receive constantly the, the feedback from the students. This feed, the, the feedback that students provide is very important and gives us an insight of their perspectives, how they're going, how they're doing in the class how they're adjusting, which is very important. An inclusive online environment, very important. Make an effort to ensure all students feel welcome, valued, and in the online classes. Uh, encourage diverse perspectives and create space for all voices to be heard. 
Be attentive and responsive. Respond to student messages, emails, or discuss discussion posts in a timely manner. Uh, sometimes students don't receive any answer from their teachers, their faculty, their professors, or administrators, and they that makes them very anxious. And we should answer always in a timely manner. That would be like that we must do. I know we have a lot of work, but answering on time is very important for students and for us. Acknowledge and validate student questions and concerns, providing a thoughtful and supportive responsive. I'm gonna give you like uh, two examples of how active listening, understanding and connecting can improve student engagement and trust. This is very simple, very simple. It was given by a professor. A student confronts difficulties with a math class and ta uh, talk to his, uh, his professor. He explains the situation. He indicates that he is very anxious about the class. The professor listen actively and refers the student to the tutoring program and to the counselor. Follow up in that is important. Student catch up and he's doing much better in the class. A student also is facing financial prob problems and talks to the professor about how he is so exhausted and he mentions that he can he can he may not be able to continue studying because he indicates that he's very depressed and needs to work rather than study. That happens a lot, right? The professor listens actively and refers him to the counselor and also the counselor attends the emotional aspects of the student. The counselor also refers the student to the financial aid and placement department. The student is placed at the end in the work and study program so it helped his financial issues, is referred to mental health services, and the counselor, counselor keeps providing follow-up on his progress. The student was able to complete this coursework and continues to be follow-up. So those are two successful stories. Understanding student needs. Understanding the needs is very important. It is critical that the students feel that we don't mind being helpful, that they don't bother. We must be emphatic, emphatic. We must be mindful on the students' expectations and experiences. All our senses should be brought into the process of interaction. Explore the different needs and backgrounds of students and how to cater them. Exploring student needs and backgrounds is important for creating an inclusive and supportive learning environment that caters to each student's unique situation. Here are some strategies. I'm gonna share some strategies to better understand your students' needs and backgrounds. We need to understand diversity. It's essential for creating an inclusive and supportive community. In any educational service setting, diversity encompasses a wider range of individual, individual differences, including but not limited to race, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, age, disability, religion, and cultural background. Here are some strategies. Provide education on diversity. Offer workshops, courses, or seminars on the topic. Create a safe space. Foster an environment where everyone feels safe and express their identities and share their experiences. Encourage cultural exchange. Organize events or activities that celebrate different cultures and backgrounds. This can help students learn about and appreciate very various traditions and customs. Promote, incorporate diverse perspectives. That's very important. 
um, support affinity groups, provide spaces for affinity groups or resources center where the student can feel identified, uh, create diverse leadership opportunities, encourage a range of voice and perspective in leadership, uh, have them participate in clubs or student organizations, which will promote leadership. Gather always feedback regularly, seek input from students about their experiences and perceptions of diversity and inclusion. By promoting an understanding and appreci appreciation of diversity, we can create a more inclusive and supportive educational environment where all students can thrive. Need to know the student's demographics. This involves tailoring support and resources based on the traits of the different student groups. This approach acknowledges the students that have unique experiences and challenges based on their demographics. Some strategies to cater to uh, uh, promote those students' needs by demographic will be data-driven uh, insight, tailored support services, offer specialized support for um, to, an to analyze and identify trends in areas with those specific groups, tailored support services. Support services offer specialized support services for different students' groups. Accessible resources provide resources that cater to students with disabilities, such as accessible course material, assistive technology, and accommodations in testing classroom. Cultural uh, competency training, also language um, services for, since this is an organization that promotes uh, the growth of the students that are Latino or Hispanic, language services, if you're uh, offering services in multiple languages to support students um, who may be uh, English learners, we need to take that into consideration. Career service for diverse uh, population is also important and peer mentoring program. Establish peer mentoring programs where students can receive guidance and advice, support from others, other people Years. This has been proven that works and uh, it helps with, with similar students with backgrounds and experiences. By focusing of, <clears throat> on the specific needs of different demographic groups, institutions can create an environment that supports the success and well being of all students. Get to know students personally. Start by introducing yourself and sharing. Share a, a, a bit about your background to build rapport. Invite students to share information about themselves, such as their interests, hobbies, and cultural backgrounds. Host one-on-one -on -one meetings. Schedule individual, individual meetings with the students early in the term to discuss their goals and concerns and how are they going to be successful. Use the meetings to learn more about students' background and how we can support them. Obster observe also students' behavior and engagement. That's very, very important. <clears throat> Pay attention to group dynamics. Observe how students interact with each other in group activities or discussions. Identify students who may be struggling socially or who may need additional support uh, in collaborative set settings, like the examples that I provided from the two professors that help their students by referrals. Use discussion forums and chat features. Encourage student feedback. Invite students to provide feedback on their course. Use the feedback to adjust. Always the feedback. The student needs to know that when he is providing feedback, we are listening to the feedback and we are taking action. So every time we receive feedback, we should communicate back what we are doing with the feedback that we are receiving. Create open communication channels. Encourage students with uh, to communicate with you 
about any issues that they may face, you need to know also the services that the institution that you're working with or that the university uh, facilitates for students in order to guide them better. Offer surveys and uh, check-ins. Students uh, use regular check-ins to ask students how they're doing and whether they need support. Surveys, we love surveys. Surveys should, should be short and let students know what their feedback, like I first said. If, you, if a student is giving us feedback and we are not listening to the feedback and we are not responding to the feedback, the later on the service will be ineffective. Respect to the student uh, privacy and confidentiality. Create a safe space where students feel comfortable sharing their concerns without fear or judgment. I know that we have laws that protect students' confidentiality, but sometimes we see that we share information that we shouldn't be sharing and that is not fair for the student, especially between faculty. We do not want judgment or preconceived ideas of the students. Ensure that any information students share with you uh, remains confidential unless they consent to sharing it or you have an emergency because sometimes they share information that lead to an emergency and we need to active certain emergency plans. Create forums and chat channels for students to introduce themselves and build a sense of community and encourage open discussions in platform. Leverage existing support system. At our own universities, we have a support system. We as an educator or as an administrator, we need to know which uh, so which are those support services? Collaborate with school counselors, advisors, and other support staff to better understand the student's need. Recognizing here, recognizing and addressing student emotional, social, and academic needs. It's essential for creating a supportive educational environment where students can thrive and be successful. What are some of the benefits? We will have improved academic performance. We will have enhanced well being, increased retention rates that we talk so much about retention. Retention is about caring about our student, taking action with our student, positive relationships, development of lifestyle such as communication, empathy, and emotional regulation. Strategies for recognizing and addressing emotional, social, and academic needs. Observe, and this, I've been saying this so many times, but we need to observe our students' behavior. We in the classroom, we spend more time with the students we need to observe student behavior, pay attention to changes in students' behavior, such as the mood swings, signals of distress, if they want to withdraw, notice patterns in students' participation engagement that will not allow them to perform uh, successfully in the class activities. Monitor, monitor online engagement. <clears throat> Pay attention to students' engagement in online discussions, participation in li uh, live sessions, and uh, they co if they complete their assignments, look for patterns uh, when they decrease their activity, which may indicate that they have something that is bothering, that they may have, and it's an indicator maybe of an emotional situation, or they're just struggling academically. Listen to the com a student communication. Monitor the verbal and written communication in the classes. Monitor academic performance. Track students' academic progress. Sometimes you see that a student is failing. Don't wait till the end. Try to uh, keep track of the progress and make 
on-time interventions before it's too late and our student fails. Look for uh, students when they decline in performance or signs of academic disadvantage. Provide, like I said, access to resources, communicate often, offer the accommodation. Check in regularly. This is something that we keep up doing all the time and we have to go back for it. Work with support staff. <clears throat> Connecting with students, building empathy and rapport with students, whether in person or online, is essential for fostering positive learning environments where students feel valued, supported, and understood. Here are the, I'm gonna share some uh, best practices and strategies for connecting with students. Uh, building empathy and rapport with both in-person and uh, online students. We can uh, make a, a positive classroom culture, create an inclusive, like a, we, we've been talking about, and respectful classroom environment where all students feel welcome, encourage collaboration and peer support among students. Peer support has been proven to be very, very effective Share personal stories and experience. Humanize the class. Share appropriate personal stories or experience that relate to lessons or topics. This can help, like I said, humanize you and make you more relatable to, their, to your students. Provide timely and constructive feedback. Constructive feedback. Offer specific uh, feedback on students' work and participation. Uh, show appreciation for your students' effort and celebrate, let's celebrate their achievements. Encourage the participation, create opportunities for students to share their thoughts, ideas, and questions. Use, like I've been saying, open-ended questions that engage students in a conversation and you can keep up in a conversation with them. Create opportunities for interaction in person classes, use groups and pair activities to foster interaction uh, within students. In online classes, like I've been mentioning, use the breakout rooms, discussion forums, and uh, just have those cameras on and have that contact like if you were in person. Be flexible and adapt. Be open to the feedback from students and willing to adjust your teaching methods as needed. You have a diverse population of students and we need to be very, very, um, very on point, I would say, with the, the methodology that we are using in our classrooms. Show uh, flexibility also, accommodating students' individual needs and learning styles. That's part of it. That's what we're trying to do. Con be consistent. Be consistent in your interactions and your intentions with students, including the communication, the grading, and the expectations that they should have. When we're talking about consistency, try, we, as we spoke before, answering the, the messages of the students on time. If you uh, offer a quiz or a test, you need to provide feedback on time and keep track up on progress and let your student know how he's progressing in the classroom. <clears throat> Build trust and consistency is important and we also celebrate diversity. All of our, all, we are very different. And as I explained at the beginning, we come from different demographics, and also we have students from different ages and cultural backgrounds. So we have a very mix of students. By using this um, strategies, you can build empathy and rapport with both in-person and online students, leading to a stronger relationship and a more positive and inclusive learning environment. <clears throat> mm. 
what will be the benefits uh, of building strong relationship with students? We will provide, we will, we will be providing strong relationship um, and that has numerous benefits from both students and educators. Strong relationships can uh, create a positive and supportive learning environment that fosters the academic and the, um, and the personal growth. Some of the keys uh, benefit of building stru strong relationships will be enhanced academic performance. We're here because we need to communicate, we need to listen, we need to connect. We want our students to have an excellent and successful academic performance. So when students feel supported and valued, they're more likely to engage in class and perform better academically. Strong relationships can increase motivation, which can improve students' focus and effort in their studies. Recently, I was at a graduation and I had faculty sharing the messages that they were receiving from their students. That's engagement. When students feel that they accomplish their goals and they share that with their faculty, they're grateful with their faculty, the administrators, that's engagement. That's what we're looking for. <clears throat> students who have strong relationship uh, with the educators are more likely to participate in class and activities engage students who are more likely to take initiatives in their learning and seek out about opportunities for growth. Improved uh, classroom behavior, sometimes even though we're in higher ed, I've attended many um, issues with classroom behavior. So strong relationships also foster mu uh, mutual respect between students and educators which can lead to a better classroom behavior. Students who trust their educate, educators and more likely, are more likely to follow rules and contributes. Graded emotional and social support. Strong relationship foster mutual respect. When students have a strong relationship with their educator, they are more likely to seek. Improved peer relationship, higher levels of trust and communications. I will say that, keep on saying that strong relationships are built on trust and open communication, positive impact on students' well-being, high levels of student graduation rate. Positive impact in, on students' well-being, strong relationship, uh, strong relate, going back, right? strong relationships can contribute in the overall well-being by promoting and provi uh, providing a sense of belonging and connection. That's what we're looking with the students. Um, students who feel that they're supported uh, are less likely to experience stress or anxiety and are more likely to uh, be emotionally more secure. And that helps us right with the performance in the classes and also to promote right, the retention rates and graduate gradu graduation rates that we're looking for. High levels, when we connect with students, also we have high levels of students and graduate satisfaction. A greater retention and graduation, uh, gradu gradu <laughs> graduation rates, uh, strong relationships can improve students' uh, sense of connection to their institution leading to higher retention, like I said, Students are uh, more likely stay in schools where when they feel that they're supported and they feel engaged. Final tips and takeaways. Practice, like I've been saying all the time, active listening techniques. Inclusive teaching practices are very important. Build trust, report, be predictable. Uh, provide personalized support to your students, promote student engagement, address emotional and social needs, show empathy and understand your student, build strong relationship. Imp uh, it's important to be uh, on a student center, 
safe and inclusive classroom. Students need to be, uh, feel safe in our classroom, be consistent and reliable always, and foster a growth mindset. Thank you all uh, for sharing this time with me. Even though the uh, webinar is in English, my main language is in Spanish. So this has been very, very challenging, Ms. Jurelki. Yes, well, you did a great job. And we have some questions here. Uh, let me share that I copy some of them because we don't want to uh, lose any questions. And thank you again, Rosaline, for this important topic that is really fundamental for the student engagement um, for them to complete their academic goals. So Nidia Sanabria asked, uh, or oh, she first mentioned that students do not want to turn on the camera and sometimes they don't say a word throughout the entire class online. And ask you, Rosaline, if you have any suggestion on how to persuade them to become more visible. And also Nidia, Ruth, uh, Ruth Rodriguez uh, uh, replied to Nidia that, 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 that this is a common problem that I, she thinks that everybody has. So go ahead, Rosalind. Oh, yeah, time you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was muted. Okay. Okay. I know it's a it's a common um situation that we have, all universities and schools, but my approach to uh today or my invitation today is to humanize a little bit more education, to be more um uh, human, more tolerant, explain students. Why is it important? Why you want to have that eye contact? Even though we're using technology, we can have eye contact. I can see your gestures. We can talk. So I think it's about um, always being patient, listening why they don't want to use their cameras. It's a common, it's a common situation. And I know it's been challenging, but this is a both way situations i've always been i've also been in classrooms where the teacher the professor doesn't turn it on the camera or just starts the class let's go right to the point we're dealing with humans we need to know how they're feeling how it's it how is it going so i will say try to be patient this is, uh, uh, for some of us, it's been a change, an abrupt, I will say change, right? And we are adapting, so we're learning every day. But my advice is to try to be, try to connect with your student. Look what he likes, why he doesn't want to tr uh, turn on camera. Also, there are technolo uh, technological problems and issues with internet. So, Let's be patient. Some students, they don't have the resources. They're adapting. I will say that it's, uh, it's, it's a matter of being human and understanding and talking to students, listening. Why isn't he turning on the camera? Why, isn't he, why doesn't he want to talk? Our students play many roles these days. They're not only students. They're working. There's a father. There's a mother. They're unemployed. They're dealing with inflation and sa the same salaries. And some of them, they're unemployed. So education sometimes for uh, some of our students comes to a second uh, a part of importance. It is important to survive. So we need to help in that. That will be my advice. See, again, uh, um, yes, I'm here. Yeah. I'm just really making sure that we don't leave any questions uh, out. I see that some comments that I would like to share with um, our speaker today, Rosaline, for example, Alma Vega is from management that said, awesome, great job. These guidelines are pertinent to establish positive relationships with the students. So we are so happy that you think that they, this information was valuable, definitely. 
we really are very uh, enthusiastic about the topic because this is we know that this is a common issue from all of our institutions. So as soon as Rosalind, as a consultant, present us this topic and she wanted to do it, I say yes, of course. So thank you so much. I see a lot of comments saying excellent information, exceptional. Um, congratulating you, uh, Rosalind. Also, I see that. Uh, Alma said, Richard, literature emphasized the importance of humanizing the students' learning experience to bring them closer and make them responsible for their learning. And she emphasized, great job. Uh, also, Waleska said, my advice is ask them privately and individually with they don't, why they don't want to turn on the camera. And that's another uh, a good advice. I also want to, uh, you know, we also as an administrators and faculty pass the same experience that our students when we are invited to either workshops or sessions or meetings. And I went last uh, three weeks ago to a Houston meeting for a grant that we received. Um, they made some very like uh, uh, activities to get along um, and, and um, meet uh, you know, like, uh, to get along and and um and present to everyone, so that that kind of activities also, mm -hmm. uh, Rosalind, can help students to feel like more comfortable. I know their peers and everything. That that meeting was in person, but also there, there are, are some, some uh activities that you can in implement in your courses, so they they can also feel more comfortable to Bella to talk and to see that is nothing's gonna happen when they speak or they turn on the camera. So let me see that also, if you want to add to that point, Rosalind, in the meantime, I continue to see if we have any other question. For me, the, uh, the importance of uh, the main uh, message is that we really, as educators, we need to listen we need to uh, make our students feel comfortable, that they don't bother, that we're there to help. And uh, this industry is changing a lot. So we are overcoming everyday different challenges that go from our diversity in students and also government ruling. So connect with students, Talk to students like uh, uh, I think Waleska was one of the counselors said privately uh, respect that space with the student. That will be my main advice and be human. You know, we're dealing with even though we're working with technology that we're dealing with computers, we need to be at our heart. And if we're uh, dealing with students, we need to humanize the process to listen and to serve. Yes, definitely, totally agree with you. And also another strategy that Dr. Eh, Toledo mentioned, Ma Mari Toledo said that she make a WhatsApp chat for immediate phone feedback for each of their of her courses. So that's another way, Bella, if, if you have Excellent. access to their phone, that's another way. So thank you for sharing this strategy. Eh, and I, I already mentioned Waleska that she said that yeah, uh, asked ask them privately private. why they don't want to turn on the camera. So thank you so much. Uh, we are already three, uh, uh, six minutes after three. So uh, any other question? This is the time since we still have a lot of people uh, connected, more than 120 are still connected. Anyone? I know that Isari uh, shared the link to request the certificate uh, and um, because some of you requested. So please make sure you, when you uh, request your certificate, make sure you put your name uh, correctly and also mo most, mm, mostly uh, make sure that your email is correct because if not, when we send the certificate, it's, gonna, it's not gonna get through. So please make sure before you submit the information to double check and make sure that the information is correct. Remember, we already have since Rosalind is here at our office presenting, we already have for 
presentation in a PDF format and she sent it very early this morning also so we can share with you this and also the recording will be shared as usual. Feel free to share this recording and the presentation to anyone that you may think can benefit from this important information and please uh, let us know in your evaluations when you receive it please complete the electronic survey that you will be receiving by email and let us know any recommendations on topics and any other recommendations on head services that can may support your initiative and mostly your students thank you again any final comments rosalie thank you for joining and uh I'm available if they have any questions. Also, uh, Jubel, please, you can contact me and I would, I'll be more than happy um, to serve our educators, administrators, or students. Definitely. Thank you so much. I think you have an, a last yes. slide. Yes. Where is your uh, information, like your contact information? Yes. yes. Over there. So feel free to contact either through it uh, directly to her or also through our office since she's now uh, in a part Evela in a professional uh, a services consultant, uh, consultant a contract with heads. But uh, please let us know in any way we can serve you. And thank you so much. Remember, tomorrow we have another webinar regarding this how to manage stress in the online environment with Dr. Raisa. Eh, Maldonado. Maldonado, thank you. And it's going to be El Poder del Equilibrio, How to Balance Vela Strategies for the Stress Management in the Online Distance. And this one's going to be at 10 a.m. from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. AM. This is mostly a focus for students, but we always invite faculty and administrators to benefit to all of our webinars. And please help us inviting your students to benefit from this uh, webinar too, uh, since we don't have direct contact with your student, but through you, we can definitely reach them. So please help us promote these this, this, uh, webinars invitations uh, to get through. Thank you so much. Thank you, Isaris, for helping us, our executive assistant. Also, Stephanie, thank you so much for being there. And again, you will be receiving your certificate in the next 24 hours. If you please make sure to uh, check the junk mail because sometimes go to the junk mail since it's a, it's a massive uh, email that goes through. And if you don't see it by next week, please uh, send us an email uh, to make sure uh, to see if was something happened and you didn't receive it. Also, uh, you will be receiving right away in the next hour the link to the survey. And again, thank you to Rosaline for this very important topic. Have a great day. I'm going to stop the recording right now.